So I'm just going to write save the, I don't know, like users info. I'll put the users login info. All right. So that's public. Pass in reviews. All right. And if you highlight that and just hit Alt Enter, then that was red because we didn't import it. And another thing is most of the time whenever you just type those things out, they automatically import. But if they ever turn red, then um, a cool little tip is you can just click it and hit Alt Enter and it'll import for you so you don't have to like, I don't know, it'll save you like two seconds of typing. But still, you know, save yourself some time. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to allow... Um, shared preferences to be used in our app and of course there's a special class called shared preferences right there and this allows us access to create and edit shared preferences files it's a little more complex than this but the first thing we need to do oh, might as well just let me name it shared pref I really don't like objects names the same as the classes because I don't know if I ever want to create like multiple ones it gets kind of messy but anyways what we're gonna do right now is saying okay we want to use shared preferences in our app and also we need to add another setting to say we only want this application the the app that we're making right now to be able to access this file that has the users info in it since again this is their name and their password so we want to keep this data secure. So in order to do that, you write get shared preferences, and the first parameter is the name of your preferences file. So in this app, we're just going to save the login information. But let's say, I don't know, maybe we're making another app that we want to save their uh, like notification settings. Well, we're going to make another shared preferences file for that. So you can have multiple shared preferences files. You're not just limited to one. So for this one, I'm just going to name user info. And the second parameter is just a privacy setting. If we write context, and then we just write mode private. What this means is that this file is private. In other words, only this application can access it. And there are types of uh, shared preferences that you can share between different applications. But for this one, it's going to be private since it's login information. So now that we pretty much have access to use shared preferences, what we want to do now is we want to create an object that allows us to edit this file to either add shared preferences or, or well, we're going to be reading them later whenever we display it. But if we go to shared preferences and then we call editor and I'll just name my object editor. What this does is it gives us object that we can pretty much write to this file. So shareprefedit is what you set this equal to. And now we can start adding stuff to this file. So how do we do that? We take our editor and we call a method called put string. So every thing in your shared preferences file is going to come in the form of a key value pair. So it's kind of like a really simple database that only has two columns. So the first one we're just going to call username and it's essentially just putting a variable in your file. So we're going to say okay make a key in here called username and for the value we're just going to get whatever value was typed in here. So of course if you go to username input right there which was that text field and you write get text and then we just write to string what this is going to do is it's going to take whatever text they typed in here, convert it to a string, and set it equal to the value of username. So right now, this isn't actual code, but it's just um, really easy to see what's going on. Your file is pretty much going to be like this. Username equals, I don't know, like uh, Bucky Roberts. So again, obviously, this is just, this isn't real code or anything. I'm just going to show you guys what it what's going on behind the scenes so therefore later on whenever we say okay go to this file user info and print out username it's gonna say okay username equals Bucky Roberts so it's gonna print out Bucky Roberts so again this is like a really simplified um, version of what's going on but now we have to do the same thing for the password field 
So if we actually just copy this, we're going to use the editor to put another string in. And this string, we'll just name it password. And this one is just password input to string. So now we got two different variables essentially in our shared preferences file. So in order to actually submit this or have the editor actually write it, you have to write editor dot apply. I know it's kind of uh, unnecessary. Well, it's not unnecessary. It's, it kind of looks like a extra step, but hey, that's what Android makes you do. So now just so the user has a little indicator of what's going on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a toast and I'm going to make text and I'll just say this for context. Um, what can I write? Like save. All right. So whenever they actually click this button, you know, I want them to know that something happened. You did it correctly. So they click it and it just says saved a nice little pop up on the screen for them. So then they aren't like guessing. And how long do we want this to last? How about length long? And of course, whenever you have a toast, you need to show it, which pretty much makes it display on the screen. So this is the only code that we have to write to save the user's login info. So whenever they click the button, it's going to get that text and save it to this file. So now the only thing that we have to do, and actually if we run the app, then it'll run fine. We won't have any bugs or anything, hopefully, unless I mess something up. But whenever they click this display info button, nothing is going to happen because we need to create that method right now. So all this method is going to do is print out the saved data. And let me run my emulator. Got to kick that off. Actually, I'm afraid that if I run it, sometimes when I'm recording these tutorials, I'll start the little emulator. And then in the middle of my tutorial, you see how like you can see where my mouse is moving around? Um, it'll just get stuck on the emulator so I'm like okay and it's really hard to follow and it ticks me off and I feel like drop kicking my computer so I'm not going to start that emulator and I just rambled on about something stupid for like five minutes whatever alright public void display is that what I named it on click where you at okay display data alright so in here we just want to pass through our views now how do we display the data from a shared preferences file well the first thing we need to do is this is really easy we just copy this and this of course just says okay we have an app and it's using shared preferences and what shared preferences file that do you want to use how about this one it's the only one we got so we'll just reference that one right there so now what we need to do is we can actually just uh, make variables it'll probably be a little bit easier so if you call your shared preferences which is pretty much just a reference to the file and you call a method called get string what you do here is you pass in what string you want so in this file we have two strings username and password so we're saying okay get the username and for the second parameter we don't write anything since it's gonna return whatever value is in there we don't want to pass in anything right now so I know this is kind of weird syntax too, but essentially what this is going to return whenever you call this method is whatever my username is, Bucky Roberts, let's say. So now we can print this out later on, but first we copy this and do it for password. So make another temporary pet on my uh, variable called PW, and this is of course equal to password. So again, make sure that the keys that you're putting in are equal to the keys that you're retrieving. And this second parameter, just to clarify so I don't leave you guys hanging, if you ever have a key that you access like Tuna and it doesn't exist, this second parameter is what it returns if the key doesn't exist at all. So by default, it's just going to return nothing. And there you go. So that's what that is. If you guys were wondering why you need a second one, when you're not writing any information that's what it is so now that we have two variables what we can just do is we can take Bucky's text which was this area down here and set it equal to whatever text was in that file so Bucky's text set text and the first thing is name and let me just add like a space in between PW 
All right, so it'll print out the name and the password. So now let me pause this and actually run my emulator. All right, so hopefully this works. Let me type in like uh, Bucky, Sh Bucky Sucky. I meant to type Schmucky, but you know, Bucky Sucky. <laughs> oh, whatever. That's the dumbest. All right, I just type pass one, two, three for that. So now I'm going to hit save info and we get a little toast that says saved and of course if we even delete these let me delete that and that so we can see that it's definitely not pulling from there anymore and I'm gonna hit display info then what it's gonna do is it's gonna read from that file that was saved in the background that shared preferences file and it's gonna print out Bucky Sucky which is apparently my new username and pass one two so there you go and of course if you ever wanna I don't know like change your username to the new Boston coolest username ever in your past to um like cheese 30 you can save that so it takes it saves it to a file again overwrites it and display it and check it out so pretty cool that is the basics of how you use shared preferences so uh yeah thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video